I am a strange mixture because although I'm ethnic Chinese, I do Japanese things, but my grandparents emigrated to India in the late 1890s, so they were businessmen in India. My father was born in India, I was born in India, and I grew up in India and had all my education in India. But I came to England in 1963, and I've been in England ever since. And in fact, I learned all my bonsai from scratch when I came to this country. So I don't have parents and grandparents who were in the bonsai business. So I'm a first generation bonsai person, self-taught. Bonsai is in fact my third career. I'm 79 years old. And my first career when I came to this country was as an electrical engineer. I used to design power stations and things like that and worked with the electricity supply industry for about 10 years. And then from there, that was my first career, I went on to the British Civil Service in the Department of Energy where I worked on energy policy. And again, it was all sorts of things, North Sea oil and gas, nuclear, electricity and things like that. And I got a bit uh, dissatisfied with that sort of life. And I decided to change my career around because for part of the time while I was at the Department of Energy, I used to write um, speeches for the government at, of the day. Mrs. Thatcher was the prime minister then. And I helped write some of the speeches for selling off the energy industries. And it was Mrs. Thatcher who enthused me or inspired me to set up my own business. It was all about enterprise culture in the late 80s. So I gave up my civil service job and turned my hobby into a business. A very big change because my children were only about 10 or 12 and changing from a secure job to something which was completely unknown was uh, very frightening. But luckily, we made a success of it. And today, we are the largest bonsai nursery in the UK. Since I was a young uh, child, I was always interested in plants. I remember in India, I used to grow little lemon trees and orange trees, chili plants, tomato plants. And um, plants have always fascinated me. And they have always fascinated me. So when I came to this country, my first uh, uh, home when I got married was a brand new flat with a huge balcony in Eltham in Southeast London. And everything we grew, in the flat had to be grown in pots. And that's how I came into bonsai because I was interested in ceramics at the time. I made a few uh, ceramic bonsai pots and it all started from there. So the plant became bonsai and uh, the bonsai became a very serious and all consuming hobby. Uh, well, for most people it is a hobby. It's like gardening. Gardening for most people is a hobby if you're really interested in doing it. Uh, it's about watching things grow. But bonsai is little more than gardening because um, each plant is a work of art because bonsai is regarded as art. So you're creating artistic plants. And in fact, the Chinese, although the bonsai word, the two words bonsai mean a tree in a pot, um, it's not just a tree in a pot. The Chinese refer to bonsai as artistic pot plants. So they're just ordinary plants, but shaped in an artistic way to make them look very special. So many people don't realize that the word bonsai, bon and sai, bon is poon or pot, and sai means tree. So a tree in a pot is literally a bonsai, but it's more than just a tree in a pot. It's a beautiful plant or tree shaped in a special way, um, and that's what makes it a bonsai. Many people are fascinated by the term bonsai, and they don't know what it actually means. Bonsai is actually two words. They're originally Chinese words, like all Oriental arts. Bonsai is a Chinese art. So bonsai are the two words bon, meaning pun, or pot, and sai is tree. So the literal meaning of bonsai is tree in a pot. But bonsai is really more than just a tree in a pot. They are artistic pot plants. So they're shaped in a special way, and that is why we regard bonsai as an art form. It's not just growing any old plant in a flower pot. It is shaping the plant so that it is artistic. So for the Chinese, bonsai is really artistic pot plants. 
So that is what bonsai really means. Bonsai is not a Japanese art as uh, most people think it is. What has happened really is that during this first part of the 20th century, China was a very closed country, and especially after the communists came into power in 1949, we used to refer to China as the bamboo curtain. You didn't know what was behind the bamboo curtain. So everything was very mysterious. And of course, the Japanese uh, were able to exploit that, and most people um, came to know of bonsai because during the Second World War, when the American GIs left Japan, many of them took back bonsai to the west coast of America, and they got interested in bonsai, and the uh, bonsai art really spread after the Second World War as a result of the Americans um, occupying Japan. And of course, there are a lot of uh, Japanese immigrants in America. So bonsai became popular, and most people thought bonsai is a Japanese art because the Chinese were very quiet. They didn't. Uh, publicized bonsai, so most people didn't know about bonsai then. But uh, bonsai really is a Chinese art, and the Chinese have been doing bonsai for about 2,000 years, and the Japanese probably have been doing bonsai for only about 1,000 years. So the history of bonsai goes back a long, long time. And of course, the history of bonsai is really a confluence of garden art or plants and ceramics. If you are a gardener, you will know that most of the uh, temperate climate plants that grows in the temperate world grow are from China and Japan. Anything with sinensis and chinensis after the name is actually from Japan. Look at your camellias, forsythia, so many shrubs, your aces, they all come from China and Japan. So the Chinese have a very long tradition of growing plants, and they also bred plants. They were able to hybridize plants as long ago as one in 2,000 years ago. The Chinese were also great ceramic artists. Pottery was probably invented by the Chinese four or 5,000 years ago, and certainly by about the turn of the millennium, about AD 100 or 200, the Chinese were making very beautiful um, porcelain and all sorts of ceramics, and they made flower pots for the plants. So once they started making flower pots and putting plants in them, so this was the natural evolution of bonsai. It is. Again, many people think that bonsai is a Japanese art. Not so. Bonsai, like most of the Oriental arts, was started by the Chinese. In fact, the writing, the script, Japanese script is copied from the Chinese script. The kanji script is the Chinese script. Uh, all the artistic uh, pursuits like calligraphy and uh, ceramics, uh, you name it, you know, they all started in China. Any plant can be made into a bonsai. If you roam around the nursery, you will see conker trees, oak trees, beech trees, pine trees, so you don't have to grow exotic plants. I know that most of the uh, popular bonsai are the aces, which are Japanese maples and Japanese pines. But almost any plant can be made into bonsai. So um, it depends on how skillful you are. And um, certain plants are more adaptable and amenable. For instance, if you use trees which have very big leaves, like the conker tree, uh, they may not look quite to scale. But they will still make an interesting bonsai. And if you cut the leaves, they do get smaller. So uh, there is no uh, limit to what you can do with bonsai. You can literally use any plant for making bonsai. Of course, on our nursery, the very colorful things are like the Japanese maples, the aces. Some of them start off red in the spring. Others start off green and turn red. And then you have the evergreens, like the pines and junipers. They stay green all the year. So, uh, collectors of bonsai like to have bits of everything. You know, they have a few maples, a few pines, a few junipers. So it is a collecting thing, and it is very creative. You don't always have to buy a bonsai, although many people start off by buying a bonsai. But you can uh, create your own bonsai. And that is why the hobby is so fascinating. It is a very creative pastime. So we have Certainly on our nursery, we've still got about four or five trees which are from two to three, four, four hundred years old. 
I did have a tree about 20 years ago, which was 500 years old. I sold that to a, a very uh, important customer, and he still got that tree. And that tree was imported from Japan in 1962. I have many trees that were imported in 62 when bonsai first started coming into the UK. So they're still alive. So a bonsai has an indefinite life. They will outlive all of us. Uh, it depends how beautiful the tree is. Many people think that simply having an old tree uh, means that the tree is expensive. Um, what we say in bonsai, certainly this is my expression, bonsai are like people, or like old people. You can be old and not very nice, but if you're old and nice, you become more you know, attractive to people. Same with a bonsai. It's not sufficient to have a tree simply old, because an old tree can be very ugly. So if a tree is old and beautiful, then it commands value. So it is just like human beings, as I say. You've got to be old and nice, not simply old. Many people think that age of the tree is what commands the price. The beauty of the tree is what determines the price in bonsai. The beauty of the tree and the rarity of the species. Like most pastimes, whether it is dancing, keeping birds, keeping dogs, uh, classic cars, they all have specialist groups that do the same hobby or pursuit. And same with bonsai. Since the 60s, um, as the interest in bonsai spread, certainly in the UK, many clubs have formed. In the early 60s, there were one or two clubs, and I was chairman of a very large club called the British Bonsai Association back in the 70s. I was the chairman of the British Bonsai Association from 1980 to 1987, and uh, we had about 800 members in our club. And of course, in those days, there were only two or three big clubs in the UK. Nowadays, I would say there are probably 50 or 60 clubs in the UK, but they're all very small clubs. Every small little village or town may have a bonsai club, so they will have members of about uh, 20 or 30 people, some have more. But in our days, our clubs were very large. But gone are the days when the clubs are big. But of course, now with the spread of the internet and uh, all this uh, electronic and digital stuff, uh, the clubs, um, they still have a use, but many people follow the hobby digitally. So we do a lot of uh, stuff on YouTube, and I have a large following. So that is the community at the moment. I have about 80,000 followers and some of my uh, YouTube have attracted one and a half million views from just one YouTube video. So people find it very useful to, to do it that way. And I have YouTube followers who come to the nursery to visit me. So it's a different uh, ball game now, constantly evolving. So very interesting times, but the interest continues to grow. Well, my claim to fame is really from writing books. I have written nine books, um, eight of them on bonsai and one of them on Japanese gardening. But my other claim to fame is from my Chelsea Flower Show Awards. I have 21 consecutive Chelsea Flower Show gold medals. And uh, these were uh, acclaimed uh, as quite unique because my first medal in 1984 was given to me on my second show, but since then I had quite a few, 21 consecutive ones. And of those medals, I think none of them were special. The first one is always special. But I gave up doing Chelsea in 2006, I think it was. And by that time, after winning 21 consecutive gold medals, I said, is enough is enough, so I didn't need any more. So I don't do the Chelsea Flower Show anymore because I've done my bit. But I do have a permanent display at Wisley, the Royal Horticultural Society's gardens at Wisley. If you go to Wisley, we have a permanent display there, 36 very large bonsai. And that display has been at Wisley from 1997 to this very day. So you will find that uh, my presence is very much alive all over the place. 
Ever since we started doing bonsai, especially at the flower shows like Chelsea Flower Show, one of the recurring questions uh, that people ask, ask is, is bonsai cruel to trees? You may have heard that yourself. You're cruel to trees because you're pruning it all the time. You're keeping it in a restricted pot, so you're being cruel to trees. Well, the answer we usually give to it is that you prune your roses, you prune your hedge, so you're pruning trees. All gardening is about controlling nature. If you don't control your garden, it'll just be a jungle. So all gardening is about controlling nature. So how does that differ from bonsai? So that argument is not correct. And if you're being cruel to trees, you take the other extreme. A vegetarian eats vegetables. You're killing plants. So who is more cruel? You're eating plants and devouring plants, <laughs> whereas our bonsai continue to live. So many of these arguments, um, I think, are a bit illogical, if I may say so. Many people think that most of the oriental arts has a spiritual dimension. But I think you can make too much of that. I think looking at a bonsai, because it is very beautiful, it has that calming effect. You look at anything beautiful, it has a calming effect on you. And especially if you look at Japanese gardens, where it is lots of empty space, and uh, the aesthetics is so uh, precise. So there is some order in that sort of uh, uh, aesthetic. So to say that bonsai has a spiritual dimension, I am not sold on that one. You can make what you will from it. You can still be a practicing Buddhist and can practice Zen right in the middle of a very busy life because it is a state of mind. It is not what you're looking at. So if you get some sort of spiritual satisfaction from doing bonsai, um, I applaud you for it. And uh, it's very good. It may help, but I frankly think that it helps, but it is not the basis or the main reason why people do bonsai. It is sort of a you know, bonus, as it were. You do bonsai, and you get peace and satisfaction. So that is what uh, comes to your spiritual being. So that is the spiritual aspect. But I don't think it is part of meditation or anything. <laughs> Far from it. Many people wonder what the secret of bonsai is. The most common cause of failure of bonsai is very, very simple. It is from forgetting to water the plants. If you forget to water the plants, it will die. It's like a pet, a dog or a cat. If you don't give it water regularly once a day or several times a day, it will die. Same with the bonsai. Because the pots are so small, if you forget to water it, it will die. So most of the failures I've noticed as a commercial bonsai person, when people uh, come back with a dead tree, you quiz them a little bit. They say, oh, I don't know why it died. But when you quiz them a bit deeper, they will admit that, ah, oh, I went on holiday for the weekend, or I went on a holiday for one week or two weeks, and I forgot to water it. Is it any wonder that it's died? So uh, the secret of keeping a bonsai alive is remembering to water, as simple as that. As long as you remember to water a tree, it will live almost indefinitely. So that is one of the best tips I can give you about bonsai. Feed it regularly, about once a month during the summer, with a plant food or fertilizer. It will keep it healthy and keep it trimmed. So it is not really difficult. As we say, it is not rocket science. Keeping bonsai is just like keeping any garden plant, but you prune it regularly so that the shape is maintained. And it is really very easy.